I am so excited to be talking about, obviously, my favorite fucking topic in the whole wide world. S-E-X. It's sex, my friends. I love talking about sex with my partners. I love talking about sex with my friends. I love knowing about their sex life, what they tried, what works, what doesn't, what they like, what they hate, what they're trying to get into, weird experiences, the nitty gritty, nasty, gnarly, gruesome details. Mm, Give me that. I love it. I love it. I love to see it. I love to know it. I love to be it. I love to do it. (laughs) I don't know what to tell you. I was the biggest prude for so many years, which is always like a low key a, a sign that you're not going to be approved very soon I feel like um, or if you're a late bloomer you're going to become a fucking sex goddess trust me that's normally how it goes yeah I was like approved scared of it didn't want to have sex thought it was the nastiest grossest thing growing up very uncomfortable to think that somebody is going to be entering me one day and I need to do that to have kids and then I need to birth a kid out of my vagina I mean just the the thoughts that were going through my mind as a young prepubescent little girl oof, I was terrified penises scared me didn't see one for many years. I was actually one of the later to the game girls in, you know, in school with all of that. Well, I was the first. Well, OK, you know, I was the first for some things and, and the last for a lot of things. But you win some, you lose some. It's not a competition. It doesn't really matter. The point here is, is I was never fully immersed or comfortable in being the person that I am with sex today. And I'm not trying to sound like a cocky motherfucker. I am so comfortable and confident in bed you know obviously it's so much better when you know the person for reasons I will mention with these tips I'm going to share with you guys that you're so fucking lucky I'm doing I just have to say this is going to elevate your game I believe it's changed my sex life in order for me to give you guys these tips I need to preface this with a few things that make these tips actually valuable number one Having sex with random people sporadically, not really knowing them, you'll never actually get to that, oh my God, amazing sex level. You can lie to yourself and say that you had the best one night stand, but that's in comparison to other one night stands. True good sex takes time to know your body and the other person's body and how you two connect in that environment. There's a lot more to it behind closed doors and under the motherfucking sheets. And with maturity and with time and with experience, you will realize that. So if you don't believe me and if you don't want to agree with me and if you I don't give a fuck like it's your life, you do you. I'm not out here to change your life, your thoughts, your vibe, your whatever doesn't affect me by any means. So if you don't care, if you don't agree with me, if you don't believe me, no problem. Time will tell, you know, with maturity and with age, I've definitely realized that the best sex I've ever had was with people that I've been immersed with. I've learned about I've taken the time to notice things I've learned about their bodies and you know, I've definitely been practicing on myself um, with masturbation, and all that stuff, which I always recommend. This leads me into the very first tip of successful sex, masturbation, which in my opinion equals confidence in bed. Masturbate without porn. Masturbate to yourself with yourself. And people are like, that is the most narcissistic, conceited thing I've ever heard. Because I once told the online community out here, that I've masturbated to myself before. And people are like, that's fucking weird. When I first did it, I'll never forget that day. (laughs) I was very uncomfortable. And I continued because I told myself, you are uncomfortable because you are uncomfortable with yourself. To look at yourself and watch you please yourself should not make you uncomfortable, okay? Masturbate to yourself. Guy or girl, I don't care. It's about turning yourself on with your own thoughts about what you could be doing or what you are doing to yourself or to others or what someone will do to you. Use your imagination. It doesn't have to be, I'm jacking off to myself. Use your brain. That's why porn really does rob you from that creativity, from that confidence too, because your brain's on autopilot and you're watching two people and you are not focused on yourself. You're not learning anything about yourself. You are not increasing your sex drive. You are not increasing your knowledge about sex or your confidence in bed. If anything, it's doing the total opposite. Lay off of porn and learn to masturbate with yourself. Learn to be uncomfortable and then make yourself comfortable. In the mirror, masturbate. This will show you how you look. This will allow you to come to terms with your body. This will allow you to kind of look yourself in the eye and look at the expressions that naturally come out of you. This helps with confidence. People are so concerned about how they look to the other person in bed that that is the reason why you suck in bed. That hinders your pleasure and the other person's pleasure because there is nothing. And you guys know this. The sexiest thing in bed is when people are just like 
low-key a little bit animalistic right like you are just letting all of that go and you are fucking doing what you want to do with that other person together consensually and it's just like you can see the the pleasure and the euphoria naturally you're not faking it you're not fake moaning you're not making fake faces and you got all of that from porn you learned all of that bullshit from porn that's not actually how people are when they fuck that's not actually the expressions that you make necessarily it's not actually the noises that come out of your mouth be in tune with yourself that is the hottest thing confidence in bed is you knowing your body and you knowing how you look like and you knowing what works for you go in knowing that stuff so that every time you have sex even if it's not with somebody necessarily that you you know are planning on fucking for a long time you still get pleasure out of it because you know your body you know what makes you come you know you know what works for you I've asked so many guys what the sexiest thing in bed that a girl could do is and you know that everyone has their thing their kink their whatever but a lot of them bottom line just say when she is just confident and cool with her body like when she's touching herself when she's like just in her element you could tell her mind's like floating away to like euphoria and she's you know just like going at it and she's moaning and she's her she's allowing her faces to just do what they want to do and it's not a fucking performance a performance feels like a performance a performance creates this this fakeness in the bedroom and when you're both so vulnerable but naked and intimate the worst thing you can do is actually come in with that fakeness energy because then it's just like well do I trust her? It makes you question the trust in the bedroom with one another subconsciously almost. And then you're not really as into it because if you're faking your moans and if you're not confident just being you, it's like, I don't want to fuck that. You know, I'm not interested in fucking that. Uh, guys have specifically a lot of problems with that, you know, with the whole fakeness and whatever, because they're like, I'm trying to pleasure you. And if I can't gauge it because you're faking it, then I don't know what the fuck to do, right? And then we complain how he sucked in bed or how she sucked in bed because you're all faking it, right? You're not, you're not showing them. You're not guiding them with your body, truthfully, what works and what doesn't work for you. Tip number two that's kind of a subcategory of tip number one is masturbate with your partner. This is why I preface this and said you should be, you know, experimenting sexually with somebody, um, with a specific somebody for a decent amount of time to really explore like the levels of sex and get to the best sex of your life. You know, this won't really work with somebody that you're just dabbling with because chances are you won't have that chance to masturbate with one another. But take the masturbation thing while it is like a private thing a lot of us like to do um, mostly because they're embarrassed by their porn addiction or by what they're watching that's why a lot of you know primarily I've noticed guys like need to to masturbate even if they have had sex or whatever because it's like a routine it's a habit they've built and they get to watch the shit that like is mind numbing to them and it feeds their addiction that they don't even realize they have uh, goes the same for women but I've seen it more with men in this case when you masturbate with your partner, not only are you increasing intimacy and intimacy is more than just fucking intimacy is sort of that air that takes sex from good to great. Um, it's a bonding experience. When you masturbate with one another, you get to watch each other and you can even masturbate to one another, uh, which I think is very hot. I think it's actually sweet and endearing and it's nice that you guys are turned on by one another. And you guys can help each other out or whatever. Um, you can end up just fucking. But giving yourself a few minutes to just masturbate on your own next to each other, right in front of each other, allows you to observe what they do to themselves. Because nobody knows the other person's body more than they do, right? So I know what works for me. I know like how I like to be you know, touched down there because I've obviously done it to myself and I practice and I you know, masturbate and whatever. And so I know what gets me off. I can make myself come almost instantly because that's how much of a pro I am with my fucking body. I want to know about my man and what he likes and how he jacks himself off, how fast, if he moves it to the right, to the left, if he, you know, uses his balls, if he uses one hand, two hands, spits, doesn't spit, like notice these things that will give you so much information about what they like. And that's why when you masturbate to make sure you're masturbating authentically at the beginning, it's a little bit awkward, of course, because it's a new experience and you're used to doing it privately. But when you trust somebody or you have that connection with somebody, it'll make it a little bit easier. Keep notes and take tabs as to what they do to themselves and what they like. That way you can use that for 
oral sex, when you perform that on them, or when you're having sex in general, you know, the, the emotions, the speed, the this, the that, like what they're into. Um, and you can kind of get creative that way. The more knowledge you have, the better at sex you will be. Each sexual experience is tailored to the person you're fucking, right? That's how you should go into it with. And I'm not saying to go into sex focused on pleasing just the other person, bitch, you're going to please yourself and you fucking better please yourself and know how to please yourself and not put all of that pressure on somebody else when they don't know your body hundred percent or as well as you do, obviously. So keep that in mind, like take some accountability here. But at the same time, when you go in and you're choosing to fuck somebody, the goal should be to pleasure each other. Just having that will, just coming in, being like, I know what he likes or I have a feeling or we've spoken about it or I've watched, you know, him or her masturbate. So like I, I know more or less about their body and what they do and things like that and what they like and what they don't like. I can now tailor this experience to that. And that makes you an educated fucker, you know? <laughs> which will inevitably make you just better in bed. My last and final tip for this video, I've got plenty more tips, of course, is the foreplay. And this goes without saying, but needs to be said still, because I know a lot of you guys are still fucking struggling with this. And I've experienced things where like guys have zero foreplay. Foreplay is one of those things that will make mediocre sex unbelievable. Foreplay should be building anticipation foreplay should be giving you a taste but not the whole meal right away foreplay is what gets a woman to that point both physically and mentally because a lot of you guys have been told that women are all you know mental and emotional well foreplay is your key to success my man if you can't figure out where the fucking clit is I'm kidding. You should know where the clit is, but every woman's body is different. So no shame if you're having some struggles there. Foreplay is your key to success, my man. And ladies, foreplay is what will make your life so much easier when it comes to blowjobs, when it comes to fucking whatever. This is like kind of the cheat code for making sex feel like it's lasting longer than it is or making it easier to make each other come. Work yourselves up feel each other out, take moments of pausing, build it. Even if you're dying to fuck, I want you both to be at a point where you're salivating for it. That is when you know, I think I'm salivating. <laughs> I'm turning myself on. Woo. That is when you know that you are ready to have sex. Ladies, between you and me, guys, close your ears. I don't want you to hear this. If you're like not really interested in, in giving him like a whatever, a blow job, let's say, and spending a lot of time doing that, foreplay and getting him worked up will make him come quicker it's that simple um you know tease so that you don't really have to do much work post this is so sort of like a cheat code by the way and you'll notice if the foreplay is really badass and it builds up then you really don't have to put much work post to be honest and the guys same goes for you because i know you fucking didn't plug your ears because you're a nosy motherfucker i know that you know if a guy's working on me for a long time, I'm just like, oh, build up, build up. I can come just from the foreplay. A lot of people are hesitant in foreplay because they're like, well, I'm not going to last long. In certain situations, you don't need to last long. Um, and sometimes if the foreplay is super satisfying and like super sexy, the, it, the sex is like whatever, you know. Sometimes it's not just the physical act of fucking. And I think we're so focused on that. We think sex is just that. There are so many other elements and areas of the whole sexual experience that you should be focused on and you should play around with, you know, so like one day focus more on foreplay the next day, focus more on the physical acts. You know, when you mix that up, it keeps sex exciting. It keeps sex different and it almost ensures that your sex life will not be routine, you know? And I think that that's the biggest complaint is like when we don't explore, when we don't change things up, it becomes, eh, Sex is just sex. We do it just to get each other off and we move on. That's when you lose the intimacy. That's when you have problems in relationships. That's when your sex life goes down the fucking drain. We're comfortable being comfortable. We don't really care to put more effort or try or have conversations or whatever. We're uncomfortable about it. We don't have patience. We don't want to put in effort. So that's what you get, a shitty sex life. And you brewed that for yourself, my friend. Now eat it and shut up. Spend more time with foreplay. Warm her up. Warm him up play with tempo, you know, slow it down, build it up, stop, fuck, and then stop, and then just like tease each other. Like 
going back and forth and using foreplay throughout your sexual experience is life-changing, game-changing. Believe it or not, it seems like pretty self-explanatory, but I doubt a lot of you guys are actually using it to your advantage and taking it as seriously as you fucking should. You know how hot it is? I'm going to give you a personal example where like you foreplay, you fuck, and then midway when you're changing positions, you both stop having sex and you just go back to like that foreplay teasing whatever it's like <gasps> I need it I need it like it, it's like this oh my god I'm dying you know it's it's this like crazy anticipation it's like whatever I'm getting myself turned on right now <laughs> there's nothing like it like it's unbelievable to switch the tempo up and like change the game in the middle Ooh, it's insane and this will actually allow you to last longer so while the argument is that foreplay might make you last not super long if you just focus on that at the beginning perhaps but if you do it in the middle of sex that actually can help you last longer so you can use it to your advantage it also kind of helps with edging each other um, and that helps kind of practice your threshold for you know how long you last smart right I hope you grabbed or took a thing or two I hope you have some ideas now I hope that that got the juices flowing no comment Thank you so much for watching and listening and spending time with me. I know this was like a short and sweet, quick one. I've got plenty more to come. I'm just teasing you. I'm foreplaying you right now. I'm giving you just a little bit, not the whole package right now. More tips to come. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Hit the bell for the notifications. If you guys have any video requests or any questions, scenarios, situations, things you need advice on that you want me to do a video on, leave them in the comments. It means the world to me. Follow me on Instagram. All that good stuff. All the links will be where they usually are in the description. Make sure you rate the podcast five stars. It really does help and means so much to me. I love you guys. Stay sexy. Go masturbate. That is my moral of the story. Bye.